humor, what it is, and why we laugh, or refer what we laugh at, what it is that when you laugh at a kitty video, and your friend stands there with a stone face, why is it that when your friend chokes and chokes, you choke too, but it's because you're laughing at him choking, laughing at someone falling down, especially if it's not on video, but in real life, funny animals and their sounds, sarcasm, satire, trolling, absurd, dark humor, humor without words, juggling, grimace, your friend, uncle, dad or whoever can make you laugh with only one word, especially if you share a joke that only you understand. Remember, where grandpa used to ask you, pull my finger, <laughs> and as a kid you thought he was the funniest man on the planet, memes, whether they are pictures or videos, or stand-ups, how does a blind man know when he's had enough as wiping? Taste? Waiting for it to dry? Or does the guide dog do it? How does he know he's in the toilet? And not the bedroom? And sitting there with his glasses on only adds to the papers. I love you! Like a laugh at the absurd. Whoa! Something out of the blue, or the way a certain actor plays. Like a very sarcastic Ryan Reynolds, who I like a lot. Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart, those people I admire. If to be honest, I don't really laugh a lot. And when I do, it's about something that's a bullshit or something that I'm not even supposed to be funny. Hooting when I see something like that. <laughs> Simply, there's a whole lot of points even this. It's a subjective thing. And what is it without getting into the psychology of it? Laughter is a defensive reaction to the environment. When were the first monkeys, who were regularly exposed in the face of imminent death, they were under a lot of stress. Because everywhere you go, everything around you wants to kill you. Which led to chronic illnesses and weakened immunity. And weakened immunity system already increased the change of dying from viruses, bacteria and blood poisoning and stuff. Evolution decided to help lower cortisol levels by by suppressing stress and bringing back rational thought to alleviate, and even in some places induce a mind euphoria. Next item, laughter really prolongs life, literally and figuratively. Stress accelerates the aging process. With the increase of comfort has come the hypersensitivity. Modern monkeys and therefore even a bad score can cause a strong tilt. And many will laugh from stress. And not from the fact that they are really actually laughing by pretending to defend themselves. From this we draw the obvious conclusion that people who can make funny humor, other people like these dudes on animal level. It helps our bodies fight cortisol. Especially on topics that are familiar to the majority, not the minority. That's why memes are funny, because they are vital. They are true. The funny people are like the anti-stress, people who make you feel good about yourself and all kinds of people, even women. Because if you can make a girl cry, girl to tears, the chances of having sex go up. Well, if you make her laugh, it goes up too. So why is it that when some people try to make a joke, it's not a meme, it's a cringe on the spot and a permanent ban? Like I said, humor is subjective. Because different roofies make different groups of people laugh differently. You can say nothing and it will be funny. Or you can do a joke for a year with a perfect punchline and no one laughs. If that happened, you probably didn't hit your target audience. Like the recommendation of my YouTube videos. And often the funniest ones are the ones with the higher intelligence than the rest of us. And the exact flexibility of thought. Or more accurately, perspicacity. A personality that has a billion associations in his head. Because the tons of content he's watched before, the comedies, the memes, the stand-ups and ability to put them into practice makes him much funnier than most especially if he's charismatic and handsome, then he's got all the doors and legs in the world open to him. And it's often really hard to make these people laugh, because they find ordinary things natural. It's possible that you'll notice him laughing and when you see what he's laughing at. It might seem odd that he was laughing at his own videos or at bread. There are studies where a particular type of humor correlates with IQ, like black humor or what you don't laugh at while editing irony or sarcasm instead of insults. It's toxic humor, that indicative of pretty mediocre intelligence, where the joke isn't so much a joke as it's bullying, which kind of insinuates that the smarter you are, the bigger their vocabulary, the faster their thinking speed. It's easier for them to generate jokes because they have a huge knowledge base. 
and they've memorized and used not a specific joke, but a pattern that can be used to create many different jokes that are similar to each other. So we can look at the stylistics of particular humorists. My favorites are absurd, gap up expectations, hyperbole, irony or sarcasm. Although you have to be careful because irony is harmless and sarcasm can hurt someone's feelings without you even realizing it. So first use jokes on your friends who won't leave you, only because of couple jokes about his dumber than a 19 degree angle. Breaking expectations is great, because the aphrodizer uses the expected leave, the most funniest jokes where you don't expect it. Most comedians and comedians use it. And they getting more and more popular, which sort of confirms that this type of humor is really hype. So this humor, this fantastic humor stands close to breaking expectations, because something so illogical can happen it becomes funny. Like what stands all day and never gets tired. McDonnell Douglas F15 Eagle. <laughs> How do I learn how to make jokes? How do I know? It's all individual. Take any of the options listed above. Or take and use ready-made and well-known jokes. And apply them. Well, what you take from others and say that you didn't copy them. They are inspired. Like I do. And most of the personalities you know. And no one will dare to claim copyright because ideas don't come out of thin air. It's often something you already thought up, and you only have to spice up the joke cake with something of your own, by combining things that haven't been combined, or by copying. As Genius said, <laughs> And you don't always have to boost your ass to come up with a joke with a complex structure, and you'll be seen as a douchebag, not a humorist. Also the option to communicate with memes. Yes, I propose to become a living Wikipedia of memes, and the larger the base of memes and will more people who can understand you, even if they're ranging from their mom, who thinks you are the funniest, to the British government. And at the right time, in the right place, even he will laugh. I bet you've met someone who's a meme slinger. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! And he's both your friend and the one you wanted to gag, by your own choice and because he takes all attention away from you. It's important to realize there is no one particular kind of humor, and you can combine them endlessly. It's important that you have enough computational power to make a person laugh with a sequence of different words coming out of your mouth. So ideally the advice would be to build up a base, consume a lot, memorize and apply what you've learned. Secondly, you have to be brave sometimes and take the risk of shitting yourself by telling a joke that's not funny. It's all about trying with my insecurities was able to record my voice and make this video. And what was my surprise when there were people who liked my unfunny videos? Believe me, you have the right to be heard. And if even I can do it, you can do it. I'm often afraid to even record a phrase on camera. Yet sometimes it becomes clear which joke is funny and which one is cringe. The challenge is to make jokes and feel light in those moments. Take a permanent condition. Because often the case that it's not what you say. It's what, how you say it. With acting, facial expressions, intonation, confidently said nonsense can become true. It follows from this, that humorous people have to try a lot of trial and errors in order to fight joke situations. Or if they don't have them, they create them themselves. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, mother <laughs> up. To make funny associations require creativity. And to play them funny, you need skills in acting skills. So, part of humor comes from childhood. Content that we consumed as children directly influences the way we think about jokes and our style. For example, nowadays there are a lot of jokes based on facial expressions, like Sigma or Hubbelane. And it used to be sitcoms and comedians and you can see a lot of parallels between your humor and the humor of comedians of the past. From George Carlin to the actors of today, who have built up a base in the past. A strong foundation is only after a while when you've seen a lot of humor. Sketches, stand-ups, comedy YouTube videos, if you make a lot of acquaintances and consume different points of view to create something of your own. The more different kinds of humor you consume, the wider your stock of joke generation. And if you do it non-stop, you're gonna level up your humor skill. Humor is still really ephemeral, because humor goes to tattoo with the person's vibe. The joke itself can be bullshit. And if it's told by someone with the right vibe and the right personality, 
The joke will be as funny as your grandfather telling it around the campfire. How many times have I told that joke and no one left? And then a friend that a lot of people liked said the same thing. And guess what? Everyone's laughing and picking snot all over the floor. And for my joke to be laughed at, it had to be very funny. Or at least make someone laugh who everybody loves and the rest of the people. By chain reaction will laugh too. As if in society he accepted you. So you are funny to us now? <laughs> This suggests that the reaction from our jokes depends not least on attitude of the storyteller. So you got the manual, I'm off.